This is the 41st year of the Man Booker Prize and today I'm going to talk about the six books on the shortlist this year. This year's shortlist has got two previous winners on it and two previously shortlisted authors. The two previous winners are Kurt Seer and A.S. Byatt. Kurt Seer has won the prize twice and the two shortlisted authors are Hilary Mantel and Sarah Waters. The children's book by A.S. Byatt is an amazing book. It's a huge family saga and she looks into the question of whether or not children's book writing is actually good for children themselves. This is the first full-length novel that she's written in seven years and fans of A.S. Byatt won't be disappointed. A.S. Byatt is one of only two authors on this year's shortlist who's actually won the prize before. She won the prize in 1990 with her novel Possession, which then went on to be a film starring Gwyneth Paltrow. The children's book is set at the end of the Victorian era and goes right through to the end of the First World War. Before writing the children's book, A.S. Byatt had come across several examples that led her to believe that children's book writing might not necessarily be good for the children themselves. She'd heard about Kenneth Graham, who'd written The Wind in the Willows, and had heard about the suicide of his son. Similarly, J.M. Barry, who wrote Peter Pan, had written it for two children, and both their lives died tragically too. Christopher Robin, who was the subject of A.A. Milne's books, wrote a memoir later on in his life talking about what a difficult life he'd had. So A.S. Byatt took this idea that perhaps these children didn't particularly like the idea of being the subject of books and worked this into this family saga. The judges have praised this book for its depth of knowledge and if A.S. Byatt wins this year's prize, she'll be the first woman ever to have won the prize twice. J.M. Kurtzier was the first novelist to win the Booker Prize twice. The only other person that's done that since is Peter Carey. This book, Summertime, has been flagged up as what the publishers are calling a fictionalised memoir and the reviewers are still seem to be questioning whether or not it is a novel or whether or not it's a sort of veiled memoir. Kurtzier is a South African and he's been honoured before with the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2003. The novel seems to play on the idea about whether or not we as readers should be interested in the writer himself as a personality and it explores this in the novel. This is the fifth time that Kurt Seer has appeared on the shortlist and if he wins the prize this year, he'll be the, the first person to have ever won the prize three times. This is the third time that Sarah Waters has made an appearance on the Man Booker Prize shortlist. Her latest novel, The Little Stranger, is something of a ghost story. It's set almost entirely at Hundreds Hall, which is an eerie house in Warwickshire. The novel is set at the end of the Second World War. The family living at Hundreds Hall, we have Mrs Ayres, her daughter Caroline, who has a dog called Jip, and then the son Roddy. Dr Faraday is a new character, he's called to the house when the maid is rather ill, and then we find out that there's a ghost at the house, or so the maid thinks. Dr Faraday becomes quite a friend of the family, and then strange things start to happen at the house. Sarah Waters is probably best known for her novel Tipping the Velvet, which was dramatised for television by Andrew Davies. She's had two other novels that dramatised for television as well, Affinity and Fingersmith. The Little Stranger is the third time that Sarah Waters has made it onto the shortlist, and it could be third time lucky for her. The Quickening Maze is by Adam Falls, and Adam Falls is this year's youngest author on the shortlist. He's only 34. His first novel, The Truth About These Strange Times, won him the Sunday Times Young Writer of the Year Award. This is his third book, his second novel. The Quickening Maze looks at the poet John Clare, who was a nature poet, and it looks at him in the 19th century when taking on true events when he was in Nepping Forest in an asylum. Another poet, Alfred Tennyson, also moves close to the asylum and becomes involved with the asylum's owner. What Adam Falls does is he takes a real event, which is when John Clare met Tennyson in a forest, and he works this into the novel. This is an amazing accomplishment for such a young writer, and we look forward to see whether or not he might win the prize this year. Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel is the bookie's favourite to win this year's prize. It's a huge 650-page English novel, and it took Mantel over five years to write it. It's the story of Thomas Cromwell, who's often sidelined in the history books, but what she does is she takes his position and looks at the story through his eyes. This is an extremely important part of English history. He's right-hand man to King Henry VIII at the time when he's trying to divorce Catherine of Aragon and wants to marry Anne Boleyn. In order to do this, he has to break from Rome and set up the Church of England. What Mantell does is she paints Cromwell almost as a hero in this book and she tries to get to the grips of how he becomes the Earl of Essex from just such humble beginnings as a blacksmith's boy. Hilary Mantell has been shortlisted for the prize before, but this would be the first time she would have ever won the prize. This is her tenth novel. The Glass Room is Simon Moore's eighth novel. It's the story of the Landau family, starting at the end of the 1920s, going right through to present day. But it's as much the story as the house that they lived in. 
We start off with Liesl Landau coming back to the house as an elderly lady. And then we go back to 1929 when she and her husband are newlyweds going off to Venice. There they meet the architect, Rainer von Apt, who's a brilliant young architect, and he builds them this amazing house. The main feature of this beautiful modern house is a fantastic glass room, and this becomes a focal point of the book. What we get is the history of the house, but we also keep track of the family as they have to flee the house in 1938 with the onset of the war. They're a part Jewish family. Moore's inspiration for the book comes from what is now the Czech Republic, which is a beautiful house built by Mies van der Rohe, one of the Bauhaus architects. This is the first time that Simon Moore's been shortlisted for the prize, but reviewers are saying that this is him writing at his peak.